Welcome to the Keys, guys. Me and Josh, we are here. We're in Keys West in a mansion. So you can see behind us, yeah, we rented a gigantic mansion for this adventure because why not? We have really awesome cars and now we have a really awesome mansion behind us. But I know what you guys are really interested in seeing and that is how did the cars fare? So I'm gonna let Josh kind of take this away for a second because the biggest reason the cars did so well on the way down here is because of this guy and his business. So let's see what he has to say. All right, so obviously we've taken the Porsche Cayman GT4, the Chevrolet Corvette C8, which I'm sure Justin's fans are pretty excited to watch. And also we have a GTO over there. Uh, if you're watching this on Facebook, on our channel, uh, you may not know what we're doing, but we took a trip from Lake Trobe, Pennsylvania, all the way down to Key West, Florida. Now we're turning around and heading back up. Just basically a road trip to have some fun. We wanted to get a picture of a Miami blue car in Miami. And yeah, so one thing that Justin was talking about is some of the products that we installed on these cars really made a big difference to in our decision to drive them, um, but also in the ability of the cars to do what we wanted them to do on the way down here. So number one is paint protection film. Both of these cars are fully wrapped in protective film. That gives us a lot more confidence when we are driving through literally hurricane winds and all that stuff. If something blows up against the car, we're not worried about it damaging the car. And also clear flex on the windshield. So that's a protective film for the windshield in Justin's car. Let me see if I can get a flashlight on it here. I it actually it. probably I saved his windshield. Yeah, check that out, guys. Big chip right there. Damaged the clear plex only. It didn't hurt the glass. So we can remove that film and put a new piece on there and it's good as new, so. Yeah. All right, guys, so just like Josh was saying there, the big thing here is protection for these kind of trips. And you guys know how crazy I am about Expel. This guy's even crazier about it. So we, we found a way to make it down here with actually zero problems, right? Oh, shouldn't say that yet. <laughs> well, no, we made it here. We made it here, but- Fingers crossed we'll make it back. Do we make it back with no problems? I mean, I'm sure the C8 will be fine. I'm sure the Porsche will be good, but there's one car lurking over here in the corner we're gonna talk about now, and that is a 1,000 horsepower GTO. So as you can imagine, any kind, anytime you build a car to this extent, you're talking possible problems. And so far, fingers crossed, this guy here has been driving the, the GTO and he has not had any problems. Now, we haven't really talked a lot about what's in this thing, but I will tell you, it absolutely eats the C8 for breakfast. There is zero competition there. Now, we have talked a little bit about the Porsche and the C8 in the past. The C8 is a little bit quicker than the Porsche up to about 100. <laughs> After that, the Porsche is faster, but um, yeah, the GTO, it hits the speed limit much quicker than the C8 does. And let's talk about why. So any of you guys out there that are fans of the GTO or the C8, give me a big thumbs up before we talk about this. But this thing, if we can see Don in here. There she is. That's one of them. So yeah, one. This car has twin turbos. This thing is fully built. Josh, again, is gonna to talk to us a little bit about the build sheet on this thing because it's a freaking monster. So go ahead, Josh. All right, let me get positioned here so both cameras can see me. All right, so we've got a fully built motor. It's a forged 364 with AFR 205 heads. You're gonna to have to forgive me. I'm not an American muscle guy. So some of this stuff is gonna make a lot more sense to some of you viewers than it even does to me if I'm being honest with you. I understand it for the most part. Um, diamond pistons, Carrillo rods, comp push rods, Lunati lifters, a Lingenfelder oil pump, a turbo cam, double roller timing chain, catch can, and then of course a fuel management system from AEM. Uh, it's just got a brand new clutch in it. It's a, I think it's Ben Calamer, I'm sorry, transmission. Uh, last week, you'll see a video of this if you <laughs> follow us on YouTube once it comes out. The car broke on us literally an hour after we bought it. So we had to put a new transmission in it in four days. So we got a built transmission in there. Uh, the clutch is a heavy duty stage four or something or other clutch. So yeah, um, it's pretty awesome. It's really fast. Third gear and fourth gear are just absolutely ridiculous. First and second are almost useless unless you really know how to drive the thing. We're still getting used to it, so. All right, guys, so Jimmy, who is the driver of the GTO, he's actually gonna go ahead and take the car out for us. So we're gonna get it to hear a live start of this thing on camera. Are you ready for that, Jimmy? Yeah, 
Okay. All right. Hey, he's gonna he's gonna be one minute. So. We have a question for you. Someone want to know what do you think the GTO would do against the ZR1? That is a really good question. So guys, if you couldn't hear that, somebody on Blackout Tinning's Facebook live feed asked me what I think the GTO would do against the ZR1. Now, as you guys know, the ZR1 is a 755 horsepower monster. It weighs a little bit less than the GTO, I think. And as of right now, the GTO is tuned at 850-ish, you said, right? That's, that's our best guess, yeah. Okay, so it has two different tunes on it. One of them's 1,000, one of them's 850. That's what they're driving on now. At 850, it would be one heck of a battle. It would be a huge <laughs> knock them knock em out, drag them. I mean, it would really come down to the driver, I think. I really, I think that that would be the case. Jimmy seems to shift this thing like he's uh, a pro racer, so I don't know. Getting used to it. I, I was, I, whenever I was filming him the first time I raced with the C8, I was like, I'm not even hearing this thing shift. Like he's like banging it out like it's a dual clutch transmission. Yeah, yeah, everything's good. Um, I know you're down here in the Keys somewhere, Blue Vet. Let me, shoot me an email, let me know exactly where you're at. If you wanted to try to meet up something, we can, we can do that. I know you did send me an email. I haven't checked them yet today, so. I have not gotten any of those fritters, but we're still here for a couple days. So one last thing, Jimmy is about to take this uh, GTO. Let's hear this thing start. And then I'm gonna talk to you guys about the radiator grills that I installed on the C8. Spoiler alert, it's all good information. And it's all good news, so. Ryan, there's... All right, let's get behind this beast. Give us a rev, Jimmy. Guys, if you like this sound, give GM and me a big thumbs up. Yeah, so guys, even though this is a mansion that we rented, it, it literally is classified a mansion and it's on its own private island here in the Keys. We don't want to go too crazy with this because, you know, somebody might give us issues since this is an Airbnb and they have some cameras. So we're not going to go too crazy with it. But let me answer some of the questions I've heard pop in so far. What is next for the C8? I actually have um, something on the car that you guys haven't actually seen yet. So I don't want to go too crazy with it because that, that video will be coming. But yes, this GTO has a hardcore cam in it. Um, I know Josh talked about it a little bit. He didn't go into detail, so he will be doing that on his channel, though, if you guys want to know exactly what cam is in this GTO. But you can tell by the way it idles and the way it runs. It's a big cam. So anyway, let me, uh, let me show you the best I can up here, the front radiator grills. I am hugely impressed with these. I know you guys already saw that on the video, but even more so now because they are stopping bugs but they're not increasing temperatures that i can tell so we're in the keys we're down in miami it's it, it was almost 90 degrees in miami today and i did not notice any increased radiator temperatures so i do however see a good bit of bugs getting caught in there and that's a good thing because they're getting caught in those, the the grills they're not getting caught in the radiators and that's fantastic so all right so tomorrow we are planning on heading back up through Miami. C8 Z06 news? Florida, um, none that I've read. Is there something out? Huh. I'll check that out. I've been driving a lot. So the last, yesterday, we drove for about 10 hours and we drove almost a thousand miles. So I haven't had a lot of time to sit down and look at any C8 news, but I did put out a video yesterday talking about the 2021 C8 production date. Um, a lot of people are speculating that it's going to be happening starting December 8th, which is really awesome because my birthday is December 7th. So it's literally the day after my birthday, the C8, 2021 C8 is starting. Yeah, we're definitely being safe, guys. So 
this is the Airbnb we're staying in. They they fully disinfect and everything down. We're all good as far as that goes. This, like I said, a little bit more about this place. You'll you'll see this in the videos coming soon. But this is, like I said, on its own private island off the Keys. This is a twelve million dollar mansion. So, yeah. so for those of you asking where my ZR1 is, it is at home, comfortable in the garage because I didn't want to mile it up. Um, I've already put about. 1,500 miles on the C8 since we left, and when we go back home, we're actually taking a trip on the eastern seaboard to kind of hit some of the beaches and stuff. It's going to be even further, so I'm thinking another 2,000 miles to get home. And I didn't want to mile up the ZR1 because of, you know, the rarity, the uh, collectiveness to it, so the C8 is a much better long trip car anyway, I think. Get a new video. I definitely will. Thank Great White much. North. Um, I've checked out a couple of your videos, actually. They're pretty good. So if you guys, you know, real quick, if you haven't seen his videos, he is commenting here. Check out his channel. That's awesome, Pop. Yeah. So Blackout Tinning just finished up their Facebook live video feed. Now I want to go into a little more details with these cars. So as you guys know, Josh from Blackout Tinning owns this beautiful GT4 behind me. He, I'm watching people in Miami specifically just stare at this thing, almost like they know that the color on this thing is Miami blue. So um, there was a guy standing outside of our hotel that we stayed at. Uh, where was that? West Palm Beach. West Palm Beach. There was a guy out there, and I just randomly asked him. I said, oh, which one's your favorite? Because my C8 was parked right by his Porsche. And the guy's like, oh, that, that Porsche is really nice. I've always been a Porsche guy. So, and it's funny because the Porsche specifically is benchmarked, or I'm sorry, the C8 Corvette is specifically benchmarked with Porsches because of that, that fan base that the Porsche has. So all you Corvette guys out there, myself included, even though I'm not a gigantic Porsche fan, I really love the GT4. I really love the GT3 RS. Those are like my Porsches. If I ever had to buy one, Listen to me, if I had to. This is first world problems, but if I ever did buy one, it would be one of those two. And you can really thank Porsche for a lot of the stuff that the Corvettes have to offer. Between Porsche and some Ferraris, that's what Chevy benchmarks these things against. So, yes, the C7 ZR1 is already appreciating in value. I've seen a bunch of dealerships jumping on Facebook groups trying to buy specifically the manual transmission car. And it's because they can take it and sell it for at least 140. If you go on cars.com or Auto Trader, you don't find a whole lot of C7 ZR1s for less than 130 unless they're automatics. And the last time I checked, there was only one manual for sale in the entire US. So they're rare, they're appreciating in value, and I think they're gonna go up, they're gonna continue to go up until the C8 ZR1 comes out. I don't think the C8 Z06 is going to uh, knock the C7 ZR1 off its pedestal, but um, it's gonna get close without a doubt. I mean, this, the base C8 is already so close. But anyway, guys, if you have any questions, let me know. So Josh's GT4, very, very nice car. He has this thing well specced. You can check out his exact spec on their YouTube channel, Blackout Tinting. Um, I have links for them all over my channel. So if you look anywhere, you'll be able to find it. But um, if not, just type in Blackout Tinting, check out his spec. If I were to do a car like this, I would of course probably choose red or black. But other than that, other than that, this is the exact spec I would have. So the red calipers, the red seat belts he has on the interior. The blue is definitely an awesome color, but it's one of those things that I can admire, but I don't know that I'd want to necessarily own. I don't know how do you feel about it. I'm not a blue guy. I just love Miami blue. It, I, I would have rather had lizard green, but it wasn't an option. Yeah. Um, it would have matched my business better, but I, I love Miami blue. Yeah. Yeah, if you would have got green, I would have totally understood that one. And I mean, I'm a big fan of uh, the Huracan, what is it, uh, something Mantis, I think, the green for the Lamborghini Huracans. I think that color is really cool, and that's pretty close to what the lizard green is on the Porsche. And as you guys know, he doesn't have his shirt on today, but Blackout Tinning's color is green. So it would have worked perfectly for that. But if you guys are liking what you're seeing so far, give me a big thumbs up. This road trip was really more of a adventure between me and uh, Blackout Tinning just to kind of have some fun. And we thought we'd film some live videos for you guys, kind of updating you along the way. Uh, we're kind of alternating live videos so they can have one day of updates, I'll have one day. That way we can kind of push traffic to both channels, I guess. But ultimately, 
the reason why I'm so cool with these guys is because they're cool with me and that's really difficult to find period let alone in a detail shop somebody who can appreciate you being as crazy about your car as you are and trust me I'm I'm pretty freaking crazy right Josh <laughs> so he does an awesome job everybody he, that works for him they're they're the the bunch of the nicest guys I've ever met so definitely something you guys want to check into if you haven't looked at their channel or if you're local to Lake Road Pennsylvania come out and talk to them I mean even if you're not gonna get work done you'd be doing yourself a, a disservice by not talking to Josh and seeing exactly why I feel the way I do about him because you'll find out the hard way and I'm trying to I'm trying to prevent that because I found out the hard way that there is too many detail shops out there that are glad to take your money and they don't do the work but anyway I digress I don't want to get too much into that because we've talked about this a billion times so anyway if you guys didn't see it earlier I had a little mishap over here if we can still see it yeah Josh is gonna grab a light for me right there so that is the clear plex literally saving my front windshield from a rock chip that would have destroyed I mean it would have left a crater I heard that thing hit and I thought for sure the, the car was coming apart so when that hit I was like oh that's it we stopped and I was looking all over and then Josh was like oh you got a rock chip and I was like oh and he's like oh it saved the glass that's exactly why you do this stuff so the clear plex for the glass is exactly the same as the expel for the car I mean obviously it's not exactly the same but it's the idea is the same it wants to protect your paint keep it looking as fresh as possible and as stock as possible for as long as possible now with that said I'm behind Josh 90% of the trip and he has sport cup twos on that that car so if you guys are familiar with the sport cup two tires you'll know that especially in like 80 to 90 degree weather they might as well be just <laughs> complete stickies like they're picking up and slinging everything back so he's throwing rocks at my car my windshield and because of that he was nice enough to install clearplex because he knew it was going to probably be an issue and luckily he did because that would have been a chip this car is fully expelled from blackout tinning with the expel stealth so the front end doesn't get any rock chips it's all fully protected so the only reason I want to talk to you guys about this is because if you go on any kind of road trips which I highly recommend you do if you have a C8 it's a great road trip car you the looks you get you're be, you're able to keep up with the flow of traffic and once you get down into like Georgia Florida the flow of traffic is a lot faster than you think so having the ability to keep up and not just be destroyed by rocks yeah expel clearplex it'll it'll it will save you I promise you I know the prices are some sometimes scary but if you do just even a little bit of it you're gonna find the huge benefit eventually but like I said don't find out the hard way like I did anyway guys so more about the cars Josh's is obviously fully expelled mine is fully expelled um, did you have some ceramic coating on the GTO uh, just on the windshield. That's all we got a chance to do. Okay. <laughs> Still getting the transmission installed. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So they were rushing. They were scrambling. That sounds like the GTO to me. What do you think? Yeah. yeah so we're. <laughs> I don't even know how far off the road we are, but I can clearly hear that GTO rolling around. So, um, what, what was I saying? Oh yeah. So they have some ceramic coating done to the actual GTO as well. Is your car ceramic coated? It is. As of one hour. Before nice nice so Josh is a guy who likes to wait until the last second for everything not not really he's just so freaking busy he literally puts all his stuff until the very end and that includes when he's doing my stuff which is another reason why he's an awesome dude he he has this beautiful Porsche and he says you know what let me do this c8 for this weird guy first I'll, I'll push my stuff to the very end so yeah both cars are ceramic coated as well which is another big thing because we're driving down here in the tropical storm and just getting destroyed with rain I didn't even have to turn on my windshield wipers like it was pouring and the water was just running right off the windshield and that's another huge benefit to this stuff so ceramic coating expel if you guys take any road trips like which like I said you should it's probably a good idea to have some of that stuff but yeah the C8 guys <laughs> it is doing an absolute awesome job here I think I honestly think GM built this car knowing it was gonna be a better road trip car than the c7 i love my c7 zr1 and like i said it would it's it's only about that much more than the c8 itself as far as my love goes but with that said i would take this car over the zr1 any day on a road trip and not just because the zr1 is rare or anything like that 
this one's a lot more comfortable. It's It rides softer, you have the more adjustability. What's up, JJZ? I appreciate it, buddy. Yeah, if you haven't, if you're just tuning in, check out the mansion we rented down in uh, the Keys. It's pretty crazy. Uh, Ryan, yes, that is one of my videos coming very soon. You can lower it, but it requires a little bit more work than if it was not a mag ride or front end lift car. Now, if it's just mag ride, yeah, you can lower it right out of the box. With the front end lift, it adds a little bit of complexity, and of course, the car I have is the front end lift C8. So, stay tuned for that. That will be coming soon too. Um, another thing, along with the mag ride, is it provides a comfortable ride. So the whole way down here, um, it feels like you can ride in a Cadillac or you can turn it over to track and ride in an absolute beast. So, yeah, I don't know. Like I said, I'm really impressed with the radiator grills. Oh, blackout tinnings on here. Look, look, look. <laughs> I swear to God, these guys, the, all they do is work. Even when they're supposed to be playing, all they do is work. But no, the radiator grills on the C8 Corvette, they are extremely useful, guys. So again, if you use the code HPO, you get free shipping. So give it a shot. They do have a, a money back satisfaction guarantee. So give it a shot. Use the code. See if you like them. And if you don't, get your money back. But I'm... I'm here to tell you, you're going to like them. They have not increased the temperatures of my car, but they are stopping bugs and rocks from hitting those radiators. And especially over time, that is going to save you. But uh, yeah, if you guys have any other questions, let me know. But I think that's pretty much it. One thing I noticed, Justin, that the viewers may not realize is how much attention this thing gets. Yeah. So there was not a single gas station, and we've stopped at a lot of them because we've driven 1,500 miles at this point. There wasn't one where there was not an actual crowd of people around this thing people just flock to this car because of the way that it looks everybody's saying hey i haven't seen one of these things yet even in miami where you expect in west palm beach you expect that the cars like this to be everywhere there's so much money there and nobody's seen one yet so yeah. it's pretty cool yeah so this entire trip uh like i said about 1500 miles i have not seen one other c8 not one josh said he saw a white one in miami but i didn't see it so i can still safely say i have not seen one <laughs> yeah, I know, Dan. I'm, I'm hoping not, but honestly, I've filmed, I, I have, I'm going to have videos coming out for this entire trip, and I have filmed a bunch of footage while it was raining, and it, it, it has not gotten that crazy. Now, we'll see. We'll see what happens, but for right now, it has not gotten that crazy. And like Josh said, we have stopped at a couple different gas stations, specifically Sheets. I've noticed even at home, if I go to a Sheets gas station, it basically sparks an impromptu car show. So I actually had a couple guys add me on Instagram after we talked at, talked to them at the gas station. They loved both cars, the Porsche and the, the C8. But typically people run up to the C8 and they say, oh, is that that new Corvette? I haven't seen one of those yet. And of course, you know, I let them sit in and I let them look over it and everything because that's what this whole thing's about. Um, you know, being a car guy, sharing the passion, that's what YouTube is for. I mean, whenever I first started this, it was all about sharing the passion. <clears throat> David, honestly, man, it, it really it really depends on the uh, your financial situation. If you have the amount that you, I mean, I can tell you, the C8 Z06 is likely to start at eighty five to ninety thousand dollars. If you have the financial situation that would allow that, I would definitely recommend uh, grabbing the Z06. But the C8, the base C8 is no slouch. It is no slouch. So I have no problem saying. If your financial situation doesn't allow it, this it's not like you're settling. This car is still really good. Uh, no, no issues with fogging. Um, I actually had an issue with the the side view mirrors, as weird as that is. They, they were fogging up at one point. I just hit the defroster, and that was that. But uh, nothing with the rear window. Uh, so, yeah, if you guys have any other questions, I've kind of put this car through its paces at this point. We are, like I said, about 1,500 miles into a trip that's going to end up taking me probably 3,500 miles altogether. So, and that's going to happen within like four days. So the car is going to be pushed very hard, and so far it is doing it with a smile on its face. Yes, Ryan, I do have that. That's a great question. Let me show you what that looks like. So if we come back here, I'll push the unlock button and it will light up for you. There she is. I think that looks absolutely amazing at night. Now, what's really awesome 
is I actually have a, a, a mod coming soon. It, anybody who has the engine appearance package, you're gonna really love this because this mod allows you to keep that light on anytime you want. And that was the big thing for me. The second I bought the car, I was like, oh, I wanna keep that on all the time. You can't. But with this mod, you can. And as far as I can tell, nobody else has seen this mod. So I might be one of the first ones, but I'm gonna put out that video. You guys are definitely gonna love that. That will be coming probably within the next two weeks or so. Yeah, it does look really cool. And that's why I said, I want that thing on at night because it's not that bright either. So I don't think it's gonna affect like drivers behind you or anything. It's not that bright, but we'll see. So stay tuned for that guys. I don't know. I don't know. This The C8 is just, it's just too much. Casey, man, I wish that that was true. I do not have a lot of money. <laughs> I just, I, I find a way to spend my money wisely and it allows for toys like this. So yeah, I mean, depends on who you ask, I guess. I, to me, I, I, I just spend wisely. I don't, I'm not a millionaire by any means, but yeah. Look at this thing. So like I said, I have a full video coming soon for the, the lip and the side skirts. Just pretend like you guys haven't seen those for, for the time being because that's coming in a future video. I had to get them on there right before I left for this trip and I didn't wanna, I don't know. I didn't wanna leave them off for this kind of trip because the guys at Blackout Tending have some really cool cameras, really cool camera gear. And I wanted this thing looking as beautiful as possible when they take some pictures alongside his, uh, his Porsche here, so. Yeah. Now, guys, I know this is a C, this is a Corvette channel C8, my C7, but the the Porsche GT4 here, I've actually driven it, I've experienced it. It's a really cool car. If you guys have any questions about that, the owner Josh is on site. He can answer. I can show you through the interior. Whatever you guys want to see, let me know. If there's anything you want to see, let me know if you're liking this video by giving me a big thumbs up so other people can see this and I can continue to do these kind of live feeds for you guys. I really love doing it. I love doing the live feeds, but if you guys love them as much as I do, give me a big thumbs up so I can continue to do them for you. But uh, yeah, what do you guys think of the GT4? If you had your choice, so money aside, Ryan, oh my Lord, dude, <laughs> that, is, that is the question of the day. So Ryan asks, if I had the money, if I would step out of the Corvette and into the supercar world. Um, I'm not, I'm not going to say no to that. I would never say no because I designed my, my YouTube channel around the fact that I was a car guy, not a Corvette guy. At the time, I had a Corvette, and I really love it. I love the C8. I, I absolutely, without a doubt, love my ZR1. But if the opportunity came up for me to move, I, I really feel like I would probably always own a Corvette, but I wouldn't say no to a Lamborghini. <laughs> I mean, especially a Huracan Performante, that's like... That's like the thing for me. But I've been actually kind of a little bit looking at like Aventadors and I don't know. I mean, they're really, really outside of my price range, but maybe someday. Uh, on the GTO, I don't think there's any cats, but on my Porsche and on my C8, or I'm sorry, on Josh's Porsche and my C8, can I see the motor, the motor of the blue? So yeah, no, you actually can't. And it's not because I don't want to show you, but it's because it's completely hidden. If I pop the hatch, it's actually covered with plastic and carpet. So that the Porsche GT4 does not have a visible engine. But a quick question. If you guys, if money wasn't the issue, would you take this one or would you take this one? Which one would you rather have if now, obviously the Porsche is a little more expensive, but we'll, we'll set money aside like that, that's not the issue. You have the choice of one of these two cars. Which one are you taking? Greg, I recommend always keeping the cats if you can. Um, it depends on what you're building, because if you're building a drag race car, then it doesn't matter if you have cats, but if it's a daily driver or even a weekend warrior, you're gonna want cats because it gets really annoying without them really quick. So I got one vote for the C8. Anybody out there take the Porsche instead? I will. <laughs> I love the C8. Now, I mean, obviously I'm asking this question. It's kind of a loaded question because this is, this is more of a Corvette channel. So I, I expect most of you are going to say Corvette, but I think you guys, you know, if you haven't looked at the Porsches, especially the GT4, depending on what you're going to pay for a C8, if you load out the C8, if you load it up, you're paying about the same price you would pay 
for the GT4 at the entry level. So, yeah, something to keep in mind. Absolutely, I absolutely love my ZR1. Trust me, Josh knows I do. I have literally everything on that car that you can expel, I have it expelled. So that car is my baby. And that's why she's not here, because this one's here instead because of the drivability and because it's not gonna be as rare as the ZR1 is. Yeah, and my wife. My wife is on the chat right now showing her support because she's a supportive wife. So I'm, I'm, I'm happy to see all you guys showing your support too. I appreciate each and every one of you. If you guys are liking the video, give me a big thumbs up, let me know. And I would love to keep doing these things for you. I love how, how much you guys show your support, how appreciative you guys all seem to be. I love bringing this kind of information to you. Wow, Xander, thank you so much, man. That, that means a lot. That, that's, that's awesome, dude. I appreciate it so much. I would love to keep bringing this kind of content to you guys. I love doing the live stuff. I mean, Josh and the Blackout Tinning crew have been great inviting me along with this kind of stuff. It's absolutely amazing to have friends like this. There you go, Don. That's the way to think. So... Josh, Don on the chat here says he already owns the C8, so he'll take the GT4. Yeah, Why not? <laughs> yeah, that, that's the way to do it. Guys, again, big thumbs up if you liked what you saw. Uh, yeah, the C8's doing great, though. If you guys are a fan of the C8, if you own one or even if you don't, th this thing is a beast. Dan, thank you so much. I appreciate that. I, I would love to hit 100,000. Um, honestly, YouTube has been absolutely fantastic for me. If you guys don't know, I actually quit my job in March and have been focusing full time on, on uh, YouTube and it's been paying the bills. So yeah, it's because of you guys. You guys literally, the support you show, you're helping me grow. So the more you support, the, the quicker I hit 100,000 and 100,000 is literally my goal. Now, after 100,000, obviously goals change, but for now, I would be blown away by hitting 100,000 subs. I can't wait to get that silver plaque to hang in my, my house, it'd be amazing. Thank you. We will have a safe trip, hopefully. Not too much rain yet, as Blackout Tinning is saying there. We're, we're going to see what's happening tonight. I think there's some rain in the forecast, so yeah, it's possible. It could get kind of nasty, but we got a mansion. we got a mansion on a private island at this point, so I think we'll be good, right? Thanks, buddy. I appreciate it. Xander, yeah, I did, as of March of this year, March 2020, so I've been fully employed by YouTube for eight months. And honestly, it's been the best eight months of my life. Being your own boss and, and doing what you love for a living is just, you, you, can't, you can't put a price on that. Blue Vet, I appreciate that. Frank, it's mostly a bunch of car guys getting in their cars and driving south. I mean, I wish I could tell you there was more to it than that, but unfortunately, it was really just to have a good time. It's, it's some car guys doing what they love. And that's why I started this channel was to share passion for automotive stuff. I mean, automotive enthusiasts, they're, they're some of the greatest people I've ever met. Thanks, Great White. I appreciate that. Like I said, guys, I'm sure I'll hit 100,000 someday, but it's because of you that I will. Motley, yeah. I'm way past the break-in period on this car. It, it, it's good. At, at this point, I think I got out, it had 6,500 miles on it. Yeah, so any other questions, guys? Anything you want to know about the C8 or the GT4, uh, whether it's trip-related or not? Um, they've both done very well here, obviously. They're, they're brand new cars, so I mean, I don't really expect any kind of issues or anything, but it's still a lot of miles for a car. Motley, nice. Wait until you hit that 500 mark, man. It's, it, it's incredible, the difference. <laughs> Ryan, that's a good question. That is, so Ryan asks, how does he convince his wife to let him get a C8 or a Corvette in general? And it's funny because I didn't have to convince my wife. It was actually the other way around. I had a Camaro ZL1 and she was really the one pushing me to get the Corvette. So. Yeah, it, it really, it kind of depends on what kind of wife you have, I think. Ryan, I'll give your wife my number off camera and we'll figure it out. Step out of the show. There you go. Hi, everybody. So that, Thank you for the support. Yeah, that's Miss HPO right there. Joshua, that is, uh, 
That is actually Blackout Tinning's GTO. So he owns the, the Miami Blue GT4 and the Silver GTO, as well as the car that's got the headlights on so you guys can see me. That's owned by him as well. Yeah. What's up, Josh? Thanks for tuning in, buddy. So, yeah, any, any questions you have, Josh, since you're just tuning in, let me know if you, uh, you want to know anything about the C8 Corvette, the way it's handled, a 1,500-mile trip, and another 2,000 miles on the way home. So overall, this trip will be 3,500 miles. How it's done? It's done fantastic. I, I absolutely love this car. It's so comfortable to drive. It's so easy to drive. So if you get into the C8 Corvette and you aren't necessarily the best driver on the planet, this thing instills some serious confidence. You can get in there and really look like you know what you're doing, even if you have no idea. Now, that was especially evident in my video that I made when I took it to the drag strip. I've never been to the drag strip before, so neither has the, this particular C8. Whenever I got into the driver's side seat of it and just mashed the gas, I got an 11.7. So not the best time on the planet, but for a stock car, first time down the strip, it was very respectable. Thank you. I appreciate that. That This C8 Corvette is as fire as it is because of the guys at Blackout Tinning. They did the Expel Satin Wrap on it, or Expel Stealth, I apologize. It is a satin finish wrap. John, yes. That, I was waiting for that question. So I put this in the videos coming up here pretty soon, but right now I am averaging 25 miles per gallon in this car. So for the last 1,500 miles, 25 miles per gallon out of a 500 horsepower V8 engine. How crazy is that? Now, the best part is, is it would be higher than 25 miles per gallon if I wasn't constantly racing a blue GT4 <laughs> and also messing around with a GTO that I have no business messing around with. Yeah, so like Amber says here, Blackout Tinning, the owner of Blackout also owns a Lamborghini Gallardo. You'll see that on his channel as well. I'm still waiting. He's, he's supposed to let me drive that one of these days. Uh, no, Ryan, really not. Not too much water behind there. If it gets washed, uh, you'll get some water back there. But just driving through the rain, I have not noticed any water getting behind the taillight covers. The way that they're designed is it does funnel the water out the bottom anyway. So if any gets back there, it will quickly exit, I guess. But yeah, they look really cool. Um, let me show you guys. Uh, Amber, you want to step in the C8 and push the brake lights for me, or the brake pedal? I want to show you guys what these taillight covers look like at night. So if you, if you didn't see the video, I actually took them off the, actually just go ahead and turn on the, the headlights on the stock there. So I took off the clear part. Yeah, okay, let off there and then just turn them on on the stock. Turn the headlights on. It's on the left side. Yeah, there you go. Hey, Chuck, how you doing, buddy? So there they are, guys, fully lit up. Yeah, and there's the brake lights. So go ahead and hit that again, Amber. Brake lights on, the actual LED running lights there. That's with the covers on, so they look really good. Still very factory. They just give it an extra little bit of a stealth appearance. So everything on this car, for the most part, is red and black. Now the taillights look really good. They're not a different shade of red like they were before. So, yeah, guys, if you like what you see so far, please give me a big thumbs up. That helps YouTube kind of determine their algorithm, kind of let people know that this video is for other automotive enthusiasts. So please hit that thumbs up button. Let me know you're liking what you're seeing. And head over to Blackout Tinning's channel. Right there, that's Josh. They are really good guys. You will love that channel if you are an automotive enthusiast. Obviously you already love mine and it's for the same reason because we're all automotive enthusiasts and it's awesome. Chuck, I don't wanna get pulled over anymore. <laughs> I, don't, I don't need red license plates on, red license plate bulbs on the C8 Corvette. I'll get pulled over in a friggin' heartbeat. Yeah, so a lot of people have put down money on the C8 Z06 and that's awesome. Uh, I am number two on the list at my dealership, I believe, so I will be getting the C8 Z06 as well. But until then, like I said, the C8 is no slouch, so. <laughs> no, Blackout Tinning's still here, there he is. Now, what, what time is it? It's not that late, it's, is it? No, it's only eight o'clock. Ah, it's only eight o'clock here, we're good. Just getting ready to We're exploring the mansion. This guy doesn't go to bed until like 
2 a.m. anyway, and then he gets up at 7 because he's a friggin' monster. 7. That's sleeping in. Seven sleeping in for this guy. So he's laying down the, the third car of Expel by 7 a.m., right? All right, guys. Big thumbs up. One last time. Hit that thumbs up for me. Let, let me know you like the content. Let YouTube know you like the content. But I think we're going to wrap it up here. Ah, uh, that's a Cassandra. I got to answer that question. So I don't know if I like that wing. Um, I almost got that wing, and I don't. I'm kind of glad I didn't because I saw it on a car and I don't think I like it. But I do have a wing coming for the, the C8 very soon that I think you guys are all gonna really like, so stay tuned for that. That's, actually I think that's sitting at home waiting for me to get back, so. Yeah, I think we're gonna wrap it up here, guys. We're at 40 minutes, I think I've taken enough of your time up, but I wanted to give you guys an update on the C8 and how awesome it's been, and the GT4 and how awesome it's been. You guys, stay tuned for the videos coming. Check out Blackout Tinning's channel. Make sure you stay tuned for the live videos that we're gonna have coming here on Horsepower Obsessed and Blackout Tinning's channel and the full videos of this entire adventure. This has been such a blast. And now we get to finally sit back and enjoy some of the fruits of our labor, all this driving, and we're finally at this gigantic house. So, yeah. Yeah, no problem, Ryan. Again, like I said, this channel was built on the fact that we're all automotive enthusiasts. So in order for it to work, I have to be able to interact with you guys. So if you ask me a question, I want to be there to answer it because otherwise it doesn't make sense for why I started this channel. I wanted to make sure that all my knowledge is your knowledge and vice versa. You know, we can kind of feed off of each other as far as that goes. So, yeah, but anyway, guys, please, big thumbs up for me. Motley, my email address is horse.power.obsessed at gmail.com. Please feel free, guys. Send me any and every question you can, or if you shoot it on this video here, I'll get to it on here as well. One way or another, your questions will be answered, I promise. I'm going to go ahead and wrap this video up, though, guys. One last time, please, big thumbs up. I hope you guys are enjoying the content, and there's plenty more to come. But that's going to be it for today, guys. Have a good night. Stay safe.